Escaping Denver, Batch 2, Episode 11, The Tapes. Don't know if you can hear it, but that men's choir's back. And because my apartment walls are thinner than truck stop toilet paper, I am back on the roof. Huh. Malanke is just taking to watching me. At least I think it's Malanke. Could just be another crow, but it just stares at me from across the roof like, like it's trying to understand me. I used to think it was endearing, but uh, less so now. All right, let's dive in. Thank you to Chelsea, who wrote in about Morse code. Genuinely, I had no idea that numbers could be used as code in Morse code. I just assumed it was letters, but she let me know that 5-5 is code for important. Which I guess makes sense given the situation. It's a lot to expect of someone to know Morse code. Even more to expect them to decipher it on the fly. I mean, did they know Andreas was bad? When they flashed the lights in that first hallway, was that them trying to get Noah away from Andreas? Well, we'll hopefully get some closure there. But in the meantime, let's head back to Sarah, who is crawling through the vents on her own. I left him. I left Noah. I feel terrible about it. I should have jumped down from the vent and tried to help him with the soldiers. Noah's missing a hand. He didn't stand a chance against three. And would I have even changed the odds? I haven't had that burst of strength again, so I can't rely on it being there when I need it. And I need it. I still have the gun and a a few of our supplies, so there's that. It's not entirely a loss, and maybe I can free Noah from whatever cell he ends up in. Lord knows it's my turn. I'm down a floor from where we started. I figured they'd expect me to head up, so down I go. I'm just hoping Palmer's truck is still there and I can use it to find another way out to the surface. That soldier we interrogated said that there'd be an elevator eventually, but I haven't seen anything. And I'm starting to worry that he was lying. But there has to be a way to the surface, though. These soldiers weren't born down here, so there has to be a way to come and go. Right or left. Oh, I hate these choices. Like a choose your own adventure. One of these is for sure the worst option and I'll have no one to blame but myself. Left it is, follow the gut. The chaos is getting to me. There's only so long that I can hold my breath waiting for the next shoe to drop. Everything is an unknown and it's becoming harder and harder to plan for. I didn't see Noah and I separating again. We're in a good place, and reluctantly, I trust that goofy blogger. He's a heap of things, but one thing he certainly isn't is bad. He's good to the bone, if that's a thing. Means well, and while he might not be your traditional hero, he wants to be, and that has to count for something. I'll find him again. I have to. One shift stands in the way of me and my leave. And what do we have here? How long are you getting off? Ten days. Enough time to stretch my legs on the surface. You should try it sometime. I'm saving up my leave for something a little longer than ten days. La di da. Colorado not good enough for our Sinead? It's a big, big world, and I've only seen a small piece. Well, eyes open then. We're heading to the archives. It's like a lifetime of museums in one place. But isn't everything boxed up? Yes, but the archivist is a bit of a nut. He systematically unpacks things and pulls them out to look at. I've seen some wild stuff. How wild could it be? We're bringing a handful of tapes and a duffel bag down here. Not just any tapes. These are from a trader they cut trying to set the experiments free. Serious? Yeah. The tapes are her manifesto or something. 
That traitor is the ally. And I need to see what's on those tapes. I followed them. I was able to find them again from the vents and watch them enter one of the warehouses. I've since climbed down, well, fell down from the vents, and now I'm waiting for them to leave from the door they entered. This is stupid. I know it's stupid. My inside self is shocked at what I'm doing, but again, my gut says that this is the way. That, that despite the odds, this archive is the right next step. What were you two talking about? Talking implies it was a conversation. No. This was like negotiating with a robot. I didn't expect it to be so big. You could fly a plane in there. Now or never. God, there's no doorknob. How did they... Oh, shit. There's an intercom. Do I risk it? Are you going to knock? Or are you just going to pace outside my door? Uh, I was... I am... Uh, I... I know exactly who you are. What are you doing outside my door? I came for answers. Hello? Holy shit. Language. There are thousands of ways to express awe, and your choice was fairly base. What do you want? How do you know who I am? And if you do know who I am, why aren't you calling for help? Maybe I have. But I haven't. I try not to get involved in what happens outside these walls. And what's inside these walls? The truth. You hungry? Hmm. You want to start a report? I'm going to give you a moment to swallow that food before embarking mm. on a conversation. Mind if I record? I admire the desire to record your journey for posterity. Not everyone respects the process. It started out as a Noah thing, but now... But now you see the value in it. No. Now he might be dead, so it's up to me. I see. What is it you want to know? Where do I start? How about I tell you what I don't know? I don't know why they took you, or what they did to you. Only that you were taken and experimented on. I don't even know why. What I do know is you and Noah have caused some trouble. Enough trouble that I have no less than three council members visit to read from the archives. And that doesn't scare you? You know I'm dangerous, but you still invite me to eat. Everything is dangerous. Even a cornered puppy bites. Am I not cornered? Not here you're not. You won't find freedom in this space, unless you're looking to be freed from your ignorance. I'm not ignorant. Yes, you are. Everyone on the surface is. Ignorance is the burden of man. Half truce to keep the status quo. Oh, but you're different? No, but I archive the truth, which is not without its own enlightenment. A group of tapes and a duffel bag just made its way in here. Archive item 7934131. What of it? I want to listen to the tapes. You have the answers to age-old questions at your fingertips, and you choose to listen to tapes of a rogue agent? That rogue agent helped us, and I want to know why. Why us, of all the people being tested on? Maybe you're special. What you're looking for is straight down the main aisle, and a right when you hit 905. If you hit a Lockheed Model 10 Electra, you've gone too far. A what? A plane. It'll have Earhart painted under the nose. I didn't understand how the tapes made it this deep into the archive because they arrived like five minutes before me, but now I get it. He used drones to move the pieces around. It's like Willy Wonka meets that crazy warehouse at the end of Indiana Jones filled with these huge wooden crates that scream relics, yet at the same time, almost whimsical with the drone zooming around. It's seriously incredible down here, though. It's what it must feel like to be in the basement of the Vatican, or like Disney World. I passed a full-size tall ship. I 
thing was huge with tattered sails. Looks like it was dredged up from the bottom of the ocean. How the hell did it get down here in one piece? And what's so special about that specific boat? Not big enough to be Noah's Ark, but big enough to blow my mind. 903, 904, and 905. Oh, wow. This is long. I mean, where do I even start? Nothing is labeled beyond these seven digit numbers. He called it archive item 79 something. Why didn't I get him to repeat it? Okay, starts with 79, and we're at 41. I'm gonna need to focus for a minute. Stand by. Found it. Took a hot minute, but I got there. They'd already been crated up and everything. And I didn't realize drones could do that sort of thing. Anyway, I pried it open and pulled out the tapes and the duffel bag. The tapes threw me off a bit. They're actually tapes, like real cassette tapes. And thankfully, they also threw in the voice recorder she used, or else I wouldn't have been able to play them. This is a pretty archaic setup, like a coroner in the 1980s. She was really trying to stay off the radar of the collective by using outdated technology. There are six tapes. The first five feel very clinical. She reports on our movements. She doesn't say how, but she got updates on where we were and where we were heading. It's how she knew which phones to call us on. Means she wasn't working alone, which is great because we could use some more help. Tape six is different. Something changed and she knew she would get caught, so recorded a memoir of sorts. I've listened to it twice now and rather than butcher the retelling, I thought you should hear it for yourself. So without further ado, This is Agent Camila Del Val, and I'm at the end. I remember that voice, and now we have a real name for her beyond the ally. Camila. Our savior who kicked off this expedition of freedom by tucking a receipt in Noah's wallet. A tiny hint that would go unnoticed, like a seed of hope. It eventually cost her her life, but hopefully not a sacrifice made in vain. Now, do we trust the archivist? Oddly enough, I do. It just seems like the kind of person so dedicated to their own world that they don't pay attention to anything outside of it. Not a good guy, but, you know, not a bad guy either. More indifferent? Anyway, so far he's been on the level, directing Sarah to the tapes, and provided this was not a ploy to buy more time, he's saved her the impossible task of finding them on her own. I'm just hoping this fills some of the gaps. If you're listening to this, I doubt you're a friend, so don't hold your breath on my exposing what few secrets I have left. This won't be an instruction manual for how to track exactly how I did what I did. It will be an explanation as to why I did what I did. Even now, you and what, a dozen other operators are combing through these messages, searching for hidden codes, secrets, meaning. And you'll find all of that here. But instead of my friends, it'll lead you to the truth. This story starts before the Collective ever broke soil on this facility. Long before the airport and the mysteries that surrounded its construction. It starts with the truth that the Collective is so eager to hide. The tunnels were here first. For thousands of years, this tunnel system has slowly grown to what it is today, and it's not done. It'll still be growing long after you and your collective comrades are gone. You... You only know what they've told you. Remember, I was you. I still am you, but now without the blinders. I get it. They painted a world that made sense with goals that superseded any national allegiances, goals for humanity. They made us believe that they were the good guys, the only good guys in this fight. Fight? Like it was fair and agreed upon? Like it was war? But this? 
This was genocide. Long before we ever joined these monsters, they had been waging their private genocide for centuries, hunting down and dismantling pillars of society that they blamed for controlling the world, the ones who pulled the strings. They framed it as taking the power back for the people, but they've become exactly what they set out to destroy. And I ate it up. Who wouldn't want to be on the side of the people? Get to be the quiet hero, acting from the shadows? But after years of working for them, I found it's a lot more shadows than heroes. Then came the light. On a day much like any other day, I sat and did my job, just like you. Diligent, dutiful, but something stood out. A fragment of information that I couldn't fit in the narrative I'd been given, a portion of truth that led me to ask questions. If this, then how that? Simple. Exactly the position you are in right now. So I quietly sought answers. And thankfully, while searching in the dark, I found others searching too. Whatever they want us to believe or to think, it's wrong. There are others who want answers too. You're not alone if you think it doesn't all add up because it doesn't. I don't know how new you are, but chances are you've only worked in the upper floors of the facility. What do they tell you about the lower levels? That they'd reduce the scope of the work at the facility and that those floors had become obsolete? That there were a few cave-ins and that due to safety, certain sections are inaccessible? All lies. Truth is, they lost control. Flew too close to the sun like Icarus, but with the wings of greed. They didn't even understand what they sought to control. They still don't. The truth is, they burnt all the books with the answers. In their never-ending pursuit to rewrite history, they've lost important truths along the way. Truths that myself and my friends have been piecing back together. An image of how the world worked before the collective meddled. Before the war. That's what we're tasked with. We are those who remember the peace. Before you think I'm part of some fringe sect, think again. In all likelihood, one of you listening to these messages is one of us. We're everywhere. Every department, every floor, at every level. And yes, the collective knows. We're the asbestos problem they don't tell the staff about. The one they hope they can deal with quietly, but that's proving difficult for them. We're hard to find because we look and sound just like you. Because we are you. Would be heroes if given the chance. That's what led me to Noah. Not equipped for heroism in the slightest, but that's never stopped him from acting. Noah is the best of what humanity has to offer. It's not, it's not about great military strength or breakthroughs in science. While those are great, it's really about character. Is he perfect? No. God, no. He's a bit of a Goober, to be honest, but that's why I love him. He thinks in we instead of I. A distinction that truly fucking matters and why he needed to be set free. I put everything at risk to give him a chance. A chance to what? Get free? Sure. Get answers? I hope so. But really, it's just a chance to unleash the best of humanity on the worst because it's time. I couldn't keep watching Noah go through the maze, sacrificing himself time and time again in unwinnable situations. I couldn't. I wouldn't. Did you know that Noah donates blood? Sure, lots of people donate blood. But he hates it. To his core. Hates needles and the smell of hospitals. He once told a story about how he passed out his first eight times donating but he kept going back even at his bone marrow tested twice for strangers and when one of the other subjects scoffed at him he simply said a problem that I can help solve gets to stop being a problem not a savior complex just the perspective that all problems are communal problems and we should all strive to help one another 
the universal we. Sounds like the lyrics to a song, and Noah just lives that. Not for ego, not for pats on the back. He lives his life that way because he knows no other way. Can't you see why it was time to set him free? I'm a fool for not taking the girl into consideration. Of course Noah wouldn't leave her behind. Sure, she's selfish, violent, and deceptive. But all Noah sees is a person in trouble. I could learn from him. We all could. They all deserve freedom. And maybe she will help achieve that. Make the calls that Noah won't. It's a happy accident that wouldn't exist without Noah's hopeless devotion to doing what he thinks is right. He needs the help, and my time is just about up. It's only a matter of time before you all discover where I'm working from. I hope... I hope that by the time you find these tapes that Noah is not only free, but in the process of dismantling this house of cards, I hope that at least one of you listening chooses to ask questions. I hope there will be others who will remember the peace. Goodbye. You're right in thinking I'm an asshole. I certainly feel like one. I don't know why I couldn't trust her, but I just couldn't. And what's messed up is that if she told us any of that directly, I still would not have believed her. There was no way for her to win. Can you blame me? If you were in my shoes, could you have believed her? Believed anyone who said that they'd want to help? I didn't think so. I mean, think about what I've been through with Noah, and he still doesn't know my real name. Trust is a commodity, and I was far too stingy with it. Noah was right. We need help, and in order to accept help, we need to trust. I'm happy you feel that way. Who the hell are you? Someone you need to trust right now. And why is that? Because we're running out of time to save Noah, and we need your help. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm almost certain that was the same voice that reached Noah at the end of the last episode. As always, the timeline gets a little messy, but I think there's a chance she ran into Sarah first. Now, Camilla. I wish she had just come out and said, these are the bad guys and here's how they run the world, but I guess that's asking too much. We can glean from what she said, though. The collective operating for centuries was a bit of a surprise for me. I pictured more men in black than something that likely involved the founding fathers, so I'm going to listen again to see if there's something else I'm missing. But I want to leave you with this question. Who were the collective at war with? The Illuminati? The Monarch? Who? Thank you to Curious Cast for sticking with me, and if you have an answer to my question, please hit me up with an email at escapingdenverpod at gmail.com. I'll be back in a couple of weeks for another episode of Escaping Denver.